we need to talk about tools. The reality is that most developers and agile practitioners do not get much say in which specific tool they use to manage their Scrum artifacts. For most people, those decisions are made somewhere else in the company. And while it might be tempting to complain and to vent about the tools, we still need them to enable our individuals to have better and more positive interactions. And so I recommend actually taking responsibility for using your tools in a professional manner. And so with that, here's my top five ways to do professional Scrum with Jira. First things first, visualize your PBIs instead of subtasks. Uh, a PBI can be a user story, it could be a bug or a feature, whatever you're calling those little things that live in the product backlog until you're ready to work on them. And the reason you wanna visualize PBIs instead of subtasks on your Scrum board is pretty simple. Your customers don't care about subtasks. They care about the valuable slice of the product that you're gonna deliver with the PBI. We want to care about, we want to visualize, we want to measure what our customers care about. And I'll talk more about measuring a little bit later. If you need to use subtasks, they're still there, right? If you need to do that to help you plan out your work, no problem, they just are gonna live inside the ticket, right? Not visible on the board, but they're in the ticket. Next up, don't forget to set a resolution on whatever your done transition is, right over here. Okay, I hate that I need to talk about this here, but honestly, it's been an issue for just about every company I've ever worked with. Jira is great at letting you build workflows and transitions and all that fun stuff, but it does not do a good job of reminding you that there are some parts of Jira that rely on a resolution being set when something is moved to done. And if something is moved to done and there isn't a resolution set, certain reports, different queries, they're just not gonna work. And I don't have time to get into the examples, but just trust me on this. Save your future self some frustration and just make sure your done transition is automatically uh, updating that resolution field. This is such a pain. Next up, uh, use days in column. This is the easiest one. You go to your board settings, you go to card layout, you click on days in column. And uh, what that's going to do is, what do you think? It's gonna make a dot on every card for every day that it stays in a particular column. So every day it's there, it gets a new dot. And once you get past a few days, like what's happening here, the dots start to turn red. You can hover over it. It'll tell you exactly how many days it's been in that particular column. This can be really helpful for a team at a daily screen from, right? Helps you spot PBIs that might be stuck, things that need a little bit of attention to get unstuck. Uh, now, this is not as good as the item age report in Actionable Agile, which is a tool I'm going to talk about in a second, but it is just so easy to turn the setting on and you get a bunch of value from it. So you might as well go for it. Speaking of Actionable Agile, uh, forget about all those reports in Jira. They all suck. Most of them are broken. Most of them can't do simple math correctly. They're just, yeah, they're they're bad, okay? Instead, get yourself the Actionable Agile plugin. It's worth every cent. It will slurp all of your Jira data up and it will spit out some real reports that are actually, well, actionable, okay? You're not gonna see burn downs or any story point nonsense here. Just some cold, hard facts about how work is actually flowing through your team. Now, if you'd like to see a walkthrough of how to use Actionable Agile to get better metrics from Jira, drop me a comment or a DM and uh, maybe we'll tackle that in a future video. And last but not least, for the love of God, please let the team control their own workflow. This is another one that uh, I hate that I have to talk about here. Atlassian really sucks at naming things, okay? Just because your project is called a company managed project, it does not mean that the company has to literally micromanage everything about it, all right? Give someone on the team admin rights to the, to the team's workflow, let them use the tool how it was intended right, to model their workflow in Jira after how they actually do the work. This should not be a novel concept. I do not understand why so many companies create a single agile workflow and just force every team to use it. Not every team needs a QA or a code review column or whatever. And some teams are gonna need columns that are entirely unique to them because maybe they're trying out a new way of working. They shouldn't need to open a support ticket and like, you know, wait three weeks for that to happen. Look, Jira permission schemes are a total mess, but in this case, it's really not that hard to give the keys to the workflow over to the team, you know, the people that actually make the work go through the workflow. So there you go, my top five ways to use Jira as a professional Scrum practitioner. Um, what did I miss? Did you wanna see more Jira stuff, more tips and tricks on how to use this professionally? Drop me a comment below and maybe we'll get that uh, in a future video. Bye-bye.